Hi, this is Kevin Thomas and welcome to the At Home Film Festival. We are still blooming in spring, so I thought we would take a look at some of our favorite divas with spring birthdays and look at some of their work. I would love to include Lady Gaga here who we're watching in House of Gucci, but I featured this just a few months ago and she hasn't made a ton of movies yet. So maybe she'll be on a future episode, but let's take a look at what seven divas we've got in store for you today. And happy birthday, divas! Our first movie is Barbra Streisand's Funny Girl. Actually, I did a birthday episode last year and it also included Barbra Streisand. But I've realized in all the times I've talked about Barbra Streisand movies, I have never featured Funny Girl. Her first movie, her first Oscar. Oh my God, this is so funny, girl. And you could catch this on TCM this month because of her birthday. This movie was so good. In fact, behind the scenes, you know, when she was doing this on Broadway, she was not the first person they wanted to cast. They had been looking at other actors. Uh, Anne Bancroft was close to getting this part, but when she saw all those songs in the range, Anne turned it down. There was just so many people that really wanted to play this part. But on Broadway, they didn't want to take a chance on a nobody because <laughs> it's expensive to go on Broadway. But Barbara was a hit. She was Tony nominated, losing to Carol Channing for Hello, Dolly but she made the part her own and then she made the movie her own and she won the Oscar for Best Actress. Happy birthday, Barbara! I was also inspired to do this episode because the movie Sweet Charity is seldom available to stream and it's on TCM this month in honor of Shirley MacLaine, whose birthday is the same as Barbara Streisand's April 24th. Now this too was a Broadway giant hit musical and it's revived all the time but Shirley's the one that made the movie of it. She wasn't on it on Broadway. And Shirley too is a triple threat. She's a great dancer, comedian, actress, dramatic actress. I don't think though, to be honest, she's our greatest singer, but she's, she's credible, but she is a good dancer. And this by the way, is Bob Fosse dancing. You know why? Because Bob Fosse choreographed it and directed the movie. And if you don't know the story of Sweet Charity, um, you'll have to watch and learn, but it has so many songs you probably don't realize are from Sweet Charity. They could see me now, that little gang of mine. I'm eating fancy chow and drinking fancy wine. I'd like those stumble Sweet Charity. to see for a fact the kind of top drawer first rate chums I attract. All I Sweet Charity, too. Cheetah Rivera. The minute you walked in the joint, I could see you were a man of distinction, a real big spender. Good looking, so refined. Say, wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind? So that they could. If we want to look at some even older actresses, also a spring birthday is Betty Davis. Now you might think I'd pull out of the hat one of her big dramatic campy roles like Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, because that also has Joan Crawford, who's a spring birthday. But I have chosen the catered affair where she kind of plays a plain Jane, um, who's not over the top acting. She really cares about her daughter, played by Debbie Reynolds, who's also a spring birthday. So in this movie, Betty is of meager means, married to Ernest Borgnine. He's a taxi driver, and her daughter finds the man of her dreams, but they have a little money. So Betty kind of feels like, oh my God, we got to keep spending money to have this grandiose wedding, even though Debbie wouldn't mind just eloping. But, oh, that really adds a lot of drama to the movie. It's not a comedy, and it's really, really good, and it's heartfelt, and it's also on TCM. And by the way, years and years and years later, it was made into a Broadway musical with a book by Harvey Firestein. And actually the original source material of this was a teleplay by Patty Chayefsky, one of our greatest writers. And the screenplay was by Gore Vidal. So you've really got a lot of good writing people behind this film. You should check it out. And if we want to look at Betty's nemesis, we got Joan Crawford's spring birthday. And I have chosen Autumn Leaves, which is also on TCM. 
By the way, this and A Catered Affair you could find on YouTube and you could watch there as well. But this movie, we've got a plain Jane again with Joan Crawford. She didn't like to play plain Janes because she thinks she's the hottest thing in the Hollywood royalty. Anyway, she ends up meeting Cliff Robertson, a much younger, 17 years to be exact, man that falls in love with her. They have this great short love affair that leads to marriage. Well, we start learning that things aren't all what they're cracked up to be. Cliff has some emotional and mental problems, which she learns about. And there's also a little interesting subplot where people are trying to take advantage of both him and her. And that just adds to the making this movie a cut above your simple romantic drama with Joan Crawford. It really adds a layer of depth and well worth your time. Speaking of movies that feature age differences, we've got Audrey Hepburn and Sabrina, which you could find on Paramount+. Plus. Oh, this movie, I picked this of all Audrey's movies. There's many on TCM and she's more known for Roman Holiday or she's known for My Fair Lady. She's known for Wait Until Dark, but a lot of people kind of don't remember this as much, even though she was an Oscar nominee. Um, she plays the daughter of a chauffeur and when she comes back from going to school and the two brothers played by William Holden and Humphrey Bogart, who work for the family that hires her dad, are smitten by her. And there's almost like an arm wrestling match to get her attention because she's no longer the little girl that they knew, but now she's a vibrant, exciting woman. This movie is really, really good. Um, it's hard to believe though that she has an interest in Humphrey Bogart because he's much older than her. But, um, you know, screenplays are screenplays. Anyway, it's a fun movie. They remade it many years later with Harrison Ford. I don't mind that one either, but I prefer this original one. And now that's a cuter couple. Tell me what you think in comments below, but super cute movie. Happy birthday, Audrey Hepburn. Okay, happy birthday, Queen Latifah. I don't know what it is about her, but I could watch some of her movies all the time, including this one, Beauty Shop, which you could find on Max. Oh, the whole cast is wonderful, but this and Bringing Down the House and The Last Holiday, I could probably watch one of them a weekend. So Queen plays a great hairdresser who was in some upscale salon until Kevin Bacon, the owner, makes her decide, you know what, I'm not working for you anymore. I'm going to go and open my own salon, but it's not in a really great neighborhood. So it's kind of fun to see her new clientele from her new neighborhood or her rich bitch clients from uptown finally come in downtown to follow her as a great hairdresser. Oh, this movie's so fun. I just love Queen Latifah. I really, really do. And happy birthday to Glenn Close. She, I think, has the record for most Oscar nominations without a win. And I was going to do a more serious movie of hers called Heights, which had a great ensemble. But I decided we need to end with something campy. So I am doing 101 Dalmatian available, of course, on the Disney Plus channel. So she obviously plays Cruella de Vil, and I hope we get a look at her soon, but she it makes it so fun. She is so campy in this. She's very over the top, and there she is. Ironically, Glenn is an animal rights activist, and if we remember Cruella de Vil, wants the fur of those babies because they're so soft to wear clothing. So none of her clothes is made with animal products as an actress. She insisted not to use that because she loves animals. Very fun movie. It, I just wanted to have something campy. She's got a lot of better, great roles. She did get a Golden Globe nomination for this, but let's end our birthdays with something fun. You go, Glenn. Oh, by the way, you know how they got those animals to lick all those people's faces? They rub meat juice on it, so, oh, bleh. Hi, that's our show of the week. I hope you share mm -hmm, and come back next week. Which diva did I forget to mention that you like? And what was their movie that you enjoyed? As we depart, we're going to watch a little more Barbra Streisand and Funny Girl. This moment, the ending is groundbreaking. Because up until this point, whenever an actor sang in a movie, they lip sync because they recorded all the songs earlier. Barbara, never having been in a movie before, thought that was outrageous because of her emotions would change each time she would express herself in song. So she got the director, big giant director, William Wyler, to let her sing this last song live because she knew it relied a lot on her emotions. Let's take a look at Barbara now.
What's the difference if I say I'll go away When I know I'll come back On my knees someday For whatever my man is I am his forever For what?